of that. Now that's what I call a view. Morning everyone. It's 10 past five in the morning and I'm just leaving my hotel in Carnarvon in North Wales and I'm heading towards the car because we're riding Snowden today. It's absolutely freezing, so I'm gonna make my way over there and get kitted up. See you in a bit. That's right, we're heading to the top of the tallest mountain in Wales. Our plan is to start here in Lamberis and make our way up the windy Lamberis path. This has some steep and interesting terrain, which is tough going when you're pushing a bike, but it takes us all the way up to the Snowdon summit at approximately 1,085 meters. From here, we're gonna head back and split off down the Rangers path. This is a challenging but amazing descent with some majorly rocky terrain to navigate. Once down, we plan to take a right along Telegraph Valley, where we'll cruise down the fast and flowing path all the way back down to Lamberis, ready for tea and medals. So now you know the route, let's get going. Here we are, we've just parked up at the bottom and we're just getting kitted up and ready to go. There's Jim, he's super psyched to be awake so early in the morning. Here we go. As first light slowly started to appear, we were above the town and had started our climb up the Lamberis Park. This lower part is mostly rideable with a few rocky sections, but it wasn't the rocks that were causing us problems. So we're about 15 minutes in and we're out of breath and pushing already. As it turns out, this section is actually pretty steep in places, as you'd imagine when you're heading up a mountain. But we're not on e-bikes today either. This is all powered by our legs and that early morning coffee we chugged down before leaving the hotel. All that aside, I think you'll agree, the colors this morning are spectacular. So this is Snowden up ahead, and today it's absolutely covered in snow as well. Clues in the name, I guess. So that's gonna make the ride interesting. Having been up this and many other mountains before, we have plenty of experience in the outdoors. But as you'll see, today's ride turned into one of the most epic adventures either of us had had on a bike in a very long time. So the Lamberis path is pretty good going on a mixture of different types of terrain. I won't show you too much of this, but we were making some pretty good time despite the early morning and the freezing temperatures. But the easy going didn't last for long. Eventually we hit some pretty rocky sections and then we found the ice, which made things a bit more difficult. Let's see how far we can get. So it's gotten pretty icy up here and we're definitely walking. It's hard enough getting up. Don't quite know what it's gonna be like coming down. Depends how much grip we got on the tires. Hopefully more than I've got on my shoes. As it turns out, 510 flat pedal shoes may be some of the grippiest materials you can ever wear on your bike, but for climbing mountains in the snow and ice, eh, not so much. Oh, that is deep. Now, every other video I've seen of people riding Snowden has been in the blistering sunshine in the summer where the ground is dry and the skies are clear. I'm starting to think that they may be onto something with that idea. You can't really tell how steep this is on camera, but trust me, this was pretty tough going. But after a couple of hours of hard graft, we were almost there. And before long, we were able to get back on our bikes, albeit in very different conditions than earlier this morning. Yeah. But with every pedal stroke, we got a bit closer to the summit and closer to the epic descent back down the Rangers Park. Summit, this way. As we made the final approach, I couldn't help but think what this section was gonna be like riding back down it in about 10 minutes time. With the deep snow, it was hard to see the proper line and it's impossible to know what's underneath these rocks. Or if the sections were even gonna be rideable at all. But soon enough, we found ourselves just below the summit. And it may not be clear wow. skies, but these conditions are amazingly unreal. Here it is. Snowden Summit. Wow. Did you look at that? Now that's what I call a view. But let's do this. So it may have taken a few hours of hard slog to get here, but with only a few steps to go, it all seemed worth it. We'd finally done it. We are psyched. There we go. Summit of Snowden. Woo! Nice. 
Good work, man. Awesome. Woo. We spent a few minutes taking in the sights, but seeing as we're now at the top, what goes up must come down. So we're here, we made it to the summit. The conditions are a bit different than we thought. It's really, really icy in a lot of places. So let's see how it goes. So now we get to answer the question of whether these sections are rideable in today's conditions. You're gonna have to take it easy. I can imagine it's gonna be pretty icy. As well as the ice, you may have noticed that the cloud has come in and visibility is pretty poor. But we knew that in a couple of minutes we'd drop out of the clouds and things would be okay again. Considering these conditions, we were definitely a little more cautious than we would normally be. On the way up, both me and Jim had stacked it and ended up on the floor more than once, so we're really trying to avoid that happening again. We've both ridden in the snow and slippery conditions before, but this is something else. Although we're taking things at a leisurely pace, this is really fun riding. Picking your way through the rocks and trying to work out what's slippery and what isn't, you really have to be able to trust your equipment and rely on your bike handling skills. How oh, lovely. On the way up, we had quite a few conversations about how rideable the trail would be on the way down, and it's safe to say that we were skeptical. But as it turns out, this is awesome. Once you get your eye in, you can just about pick out a line and ride it at a semi-decent pace. But although this pace was enjoyable, Jim had a better idea. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> yep, he's off. It's pretty cold up here, and Jim knows there's a warm coffee waiting for him back down in Lamberis, so he's not hanging around. Continuing along the main path, I made my way back to where the tall stones are, and then here I made a slight left towards the start of the ranger's path descent, where Jim was waiting. Dropping in, the trail conditions changed again. Instead of ice, we were now riding in thick snow. Not to mention that with all the snow and the clouds still hanging around, it's actually pretty hard to see the trail. <laughs> it's a bit off camber. Going down here, we both ended up having to tripod it for some of the sections. This is where you take one foot off the bike, just in case. The snow was really thick in places, making it really hard to steer. The snow likes to snatch your front wheel out from under view without warning. That is, when it isn't trying to make your back wheel slide all over the place. Ooh. So somewhere under all this snow is the ranger path. <laughs> Looks like it gets pretty deep down here. Ooh. Trust me, this is a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> oh, look how deep this is. This is mental. This is so deep. Mega avalanche, eat your heart out. This is amazing. <laughs> the further we descended, the clearer the views got. Even in the slower snowy conditions, we were descending fast. It took us just over three hours to climb to the summit and only about half an hour to make it down the ranger's path. This included a couple of stoppages to take pictures and admire the views. Now that's pretty good going. The scary thing about this descent today is that we've no idea what we're riding over. There could be anything under this snow and most likely it's going to be loose rocks and shale. But at least we can see the trail a lot clearer now than we could before. <laughs> this is amazing. This is absolutely crazy. So why did we choose to ride Snowdon today? Well, I lived up here in North Wales for six and a half years and it holds a special place in my heart. I've ridden a few of the routes around Snowdon in the past, but I've always wanted to descend the Ranger's Park. Whoa -ho -ho! Woo! Today, we were pretty lucky in that we only passed one group of walkers the whole descent. This was by design. We left super early in the morning, and of course, not too many people are gonna be venturing up to the summit in these conditions. This gives us the best chance that we'll have a clear run down. Yes, riding this in the summer would be much easier, but if you plan to do this, you should note that riders are asked not to cycle from the summit at certain times during the summer. This is a voluntary ban that's in place between riders and the national park. This is mainly because in the summer, these paths are swamped by hikers and it wouldn't be a great idea to have the bikes descending fast on the same trails. Makes sense. <laughs> this is amazing. The further we descended, the more the path in front of us became visible. We were still above the snow line, but we were getting used to the riding conditions. I genuinely had to keep pinching myself because this was truly an epic ride. This is one that I've wanted to tick off the bucket list for a while now, and so far it wasn't disappointing. 
This is amazing. Navigating the rocks, snow and ice, we were enjoying the challenging trail. But we had no idea of the challenges that still lie ahead and that the most technical riding was yet to come. You just don't know what's deep snow and what's ice. And of course underneath it all, some savage rocks. Amazing view though. Getting out of this stage, the snow had disappeared and the trail again turned to rocks and ice. What I can imagine being an enjoyable technical session in the summer certainly had an extra element of danger today. A bit icy now. I'm really glad that I put a brand new set of tyres on my bike for this trip. They've definitely paid for their worth already if you ask me. I can assure you that the GoPro effect is in full swing on this video. Watching this footage back, the trail doesn't even look steep on camera. But when you're here in person, the trail looks very different. Now, according to Strava, our route today was only around 20 kilometers long, which doesn't seem very far at all. But on a ride like this, the distance isn't really important. When you consider the total ascent and the terrain, the full scale of our adventure comes into perspective. But to be honest, you don't ride a route like this for the Strava miles. This one is all about the epic views and the awesome terrain. As we made it onto the rocks, I breathed a sigh of relief that the snow riding was over and we were back on terra firma. I quickly started regretting this, however, when I realised how loose and bumpy some of the rocks are. This is more what I expected when we set out to ride the ranger's path, something that's a bit more natural and rocky. A real technical challenge for both the bike and rider. In addition to a good level of fitness and bike skills, you're also going to need equipment that's up to the task if you want to ride something like this. There's no trail centre in the country that has anything close to this type of sustained riding. You need to make sure that your bike is dialed and running well. The same goes for your kit too. And on that note, you'll be pleased to hear that the 510 shoes that were causing me to slip and slide all over the path on the way up are now back in their rightful place, firmly stuck to the pedals. Phew. After making our way along the first part of the ranger path, we had now reached the zigzag sections. These are rocky, steep and hard to navigate. A popular route up and down the mountain, tracks like this are hard to maintain and are exposed to some harsh weather conditions. This means that they're often worn away, filled with loose rocks, and they're very unpredictable. This would be technical without all the snow and ice. After riding from the summit, my hands were starting to ache by Ooh. this point. I'd been either death gripping or braking pretty hard for most of the descent, and we were starting to feel it. But this is not time to get complacent because it's on these zigzag sections where you meet some of the hardest pieces of trail. <laughs> the next few minutes are filled with some really loose, janky rocks and turns. The terrain is really steep and there are consequences if you come off your bike. So far, this rider challenged us in every way, from tackling the tougher ascent to the summit, the icy cold conditions, and downhill that has been technical in more ways than one. So far, we've risen to all these challenges. That is until now. Not exactly designed for riding, this zigzag descent is a challenging piece of trail and that's exactly why we're here. But there were two features that got the better of us and we're coming up to the first one now. What on earth is this? So I'm not ashamed to say we had to walk this little feature here. Yeah, this is a savage one to come down. Maybe next time. It probably looks easy on camera. Trust me, this thing is much bigger and way more awkward in person. No thank you. Continuing down the trail, we navigated the loose rocks and boulders as best we could, and they threw up some unique challenges. Whoa, that's tight. Yeah, go, 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 nice. Woo. As you'll see, it's fair to say that our line choices today may not have been the best options. But that's the nature of the beast when you're riding unknown technical mountain trails. It's all about using any and all of the skills you have to navigate what's in front of you. For the most part, this went well. It was certainly a good test of our abilities. Suddenly, in front I saw Jim standing on the side of the trail, so I knew it was time to hit the brakes. Which brings us to the second unrideable feature. <laughs> I came into that a bit fast. I can't wait to show you this one. So I put my bike down to get a better view. So check this out. Some of you guys will be thinking, oh, why is it walking sections? But this is the real deal. This is tough to walk up. 
look at it. In my eyes, this is practically unrideable. Oh. I'm not ashamed to say I'm walking that bit. So justifiably defeated, we got back on the bikes and carried on down the ranger's path, hoping we can stay on our bikes for the rest of the ride. Oh, wrong line there. It worked. Just about making it past the last few rocks, we were almost down the zigzag. And once we hit the gravel road, we were home and dry, as most of the technical riding was now behind us. Down at the bottom of the mountain, the sun was shining, and it was hard to believe that only a short time ago, we were up in the clouds surrounded by snow. Cruising along this section of the ranger's path, we took some time to appreciate the views. At some points along this stretch of trail, I could have sworn that we were riding somewhere in the Alps. Honestly, these views of North Wales are utterly amazing. When you're so focused on the trail and conditions on a ride, it can be easy to forget about enjoying the environment around you. Hopefully, watching this video you can appreciate some of the truly spectacular scenes that the Snowdonia National Park has to offer. But I can assure you, it all looks so much better in real life. And hopefully, you can see why I love this place so much. But after such a challenging descent, it felt nice to be cruising down the flowing path in the sun. At this point, I could almost smell the coffee and breakfast that would be waiting for us back down in Mount Berris. So we've just come down most of the ranger's path and we've turned right up towards Telegraph Valley, back towards the Lamberis. So a little bit of uphill, then a bit more cruisy down. The final descent section is a long fast one. Telegraph Valley is a gravel bridleway that takes us a couple of kilometers back into town. One thing I will say is that you need to keep your eyes open for hikers and sheep on this section. Both have a habit from jumping up from the boggy marshes or out from behind rocks, catching you unawares. After navigating some of the toughest natural terrain, it would be a shame to have an accident this close to the car. This ride was a truly epic adventure and one that I'm going to remember for a long time. I'm not going to lie, it was pretty tough going in places, but ultimately the views and riding were well worth the effort. So a huge thanks to Jim for joining me on this epic quest. It was superb to finally tick the ranger's path descent off my mountain bike bucket list, and it was even better than I expected. I really hope I'm in a position to come back and ride it again at some point. Thanks for coming along for the ride. If you like seeing this type of video, remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.